allow me to take this opportunity to greet you in the name of the Lord. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Thank you so much, Pastor Kali, for the introduction. I'm very grateful to have come again to this congregation to share the word of God. Thank you so much, Sister Gladys, for your kindness in inviting me to the Women Ministries Day, the International Women's Day of Prayer. I know that title can be confusing, but it is international. There is nothing local today. It's international Women's Day of Prayer, international Women's Day of Prayer. And I want to thank the elders, the leaders, and all of you. May the Lord bless you. Let me repeat that. May the Lord bless you. I didn't know you are in the category of those who learn slowly, but when we say a blessing in a place like this, we say amen. May the Lord bless you. Amen. The message I would like to share with you today, my friend, says, don't pray if you won't pray all the way. Don't pray if you won't pray all the way. Don't pray if you won't pray all the way. Don't pray if you won't pray all the way. Father in heaven, make this simple and clear for all of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't pray if you won't pray all the way. The theme that the World Church has given us today is transformed by prayer. Transforming prayer is persistent prayer. Transforming prayer is persistent prayer. Transforming prayer that prayer that transforms is that prayer that is persistent. Transforming prayer is persistent prayer. Don't pray if you won't pray all the way. If you only have one prayer before you die, that single prayer is enough. If you only have one prayer before you die, that single prayer is enough. If you only have one prayer to make before you die, that single prayer is enough. But if you have a lifetime opportunity to pray several times, and you only pray once, it will not do you any good. If you have only one prayer before you die, that single prayer is enough. But if you have a lifetime opportunity to pray several times, and you only pray once, that prayer will not be useful for your life. I'm repeating again, CD Ijahang. I'm just repeating that, listen, friends, if you only have one prayer before you die, that single prayer will be what? Will be enough. That will be enough. It is good enough. But if you have a lifetime opportunity to pray, but you only pray one prayer and you have a lifetime opportunity to pray, that one prayer will do you no good. Listen, friends, don't pray if you won't pray all the way. Don't pray if you won't pray all the way. If you are not intending to make prayer your lifestyle, prayer will not be very useful to you.
If you are not intending to make prayer your lifestyle, prayer will not be useful to you. Don't pray if you won't pray all the way. If you are not intending to live a life of praying all the time, don't begin praying because that one prayer will be useless for you. Don't pray if you won't pray all the way. Prayer is only effective if it is your lifestyle. Prayer is only transforming if it is your lifestyle. Prayer is only useful if it is your way of life. Don't pray if you won't pray all the way. Don't pray if you won't pray all the way. Prayer will only transform you if it is your way of life. Prayer will only transform you if it is your way of life. Prayer will only transform you if it is your way of life. Oh, you are there. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought I'm alone. I was looking out for people. Prayer will only transform you if it is your way of life. I know maybe you come from a tradition where you attend theater, people act, then you go home and assess. But sermons are a dialogue. I'm bringing you a message from God and you respond to it. If we are together, say amen. amen. So I can't be saying things here and you are looking at me as if you are doing an assessment. That assessment will not do you anything because you will present to no one. So let's continue, friends, and have a dialogue. Are we together? We are saying that prayer is only effective if it is your lifestyle. If you understand me, say amen. And prayer will only transform you if it is your way of life. If you understand that, say amen. And so we are saying, don't pray if you won't pray all the way. If you have understood up to that point, say amen. amen. James chapter 5 verse 16. James chapter 5 verse 16. James chapter 5 verse 16. The Bible says... I will read from three different versions. The Bible says, James chapter 5 verse 16, that therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed, healing from sickness. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. What do you say? Amen. Now, this is what the New King James Version Put, this is how it puts it. It says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And then it says, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Take note of the word fervent fervent, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. New living translation. New living translation. The Bible says this in new living translation. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer, take note of the word earnest. In King James, fervent. In New Living Translation, earnest. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. 
At least there are few believers who say the men, the other ones are theater goers who are waiting to discuss the results of the movie at the end of the day. What does the church say? Amplified Bible. Let's go to the Amplified Bible. Now this is a paraphrased Bible and it's quite dynamic. Amplified Bible, James chapter 5 verse 16. Amplified Bible. The Bible says, therefore, confess your sins to one another. Then in parenthesis, your false steps, your offenses, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man believer is able to accomplish much when put into action and made effective by God. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. Amplified Bible says the persistent prayer. Fervent prayer means praying all the way. Earnest prayer means praying all the way. Persistent prayer means praying all the way. I came to tell you, New Life Church, that don't pray if you won't pray all the way. That even when a righteous person prays, they must pray all the way. They don't pray at the beginning and stop. They don't pray halfway and stop. They must pray all the way. It is only persistent prayer that is transforming. Only persistent prayer that is transforming. Don't pray if you won't pray all the way. Listen, brothers and sisters, the sick will only recover if the prayer is by a righteous person and is persistent. Two things. For a sick person to recover from their sickness, number one, the one praying must be a righteous person. It has not said that the one praying must be a relative. It has not said the one praying must be a pastor, must be an elder, or must be the oldest person who prays in a certain way. It must be a righteous person. But the Bible doesn't stop there. It says that that person also must pray consistently, must pray without ceasing, must pray persistently. The sick will only recover if the prayer is by a righteous person and it is persistent and not a prayer taken to demonstrate that the church cares. Oh, sister so-and-so is unwell. Let's go and visit her. Hello, uh, we have come to visit you. We heard you are unwell. Okay, we are fine. We were in a rush, but we thought we should just be here. Yeah, let's sing a song. Does Jesus? Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares, cares, or oh, cares, cares, something like that. Then they stop and say, can one of us pray? You pray. And no, let's have three people praying. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. We are gone. No feeling, no attachment. It is a good routine for people you have 100%. For PR, you have done very well. The sister now knows the church cares. The sister now knows that you are concerned because you made a technical appearance by the bedside. But for purposes of prayer, it has to be a righteous person who persists in prayer, who prays before reaching the sister, who prays when they reach the sister, and who keeps praying as they go home, and who picks the call and says, we have gotten home, but we want to pray. Pray again on phone because the persistent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. And so, friends, it's time to pack our PR prayers and keep them away. If we want transforming prayers, we must do away with the PR prayers. And the PR is public relation. I know our title is also PR. 
You know sometimes we pray, then it take off and disappear until death of the person we prayed for is announced. Then we are shocked. Oh, you mean the person died? Do you know why you are surprised? Because you never prayed after that PR prayer. Or the person recovers and you bump into them in church and say, Wow, nice to see you. You recovered. You mean you recovered because the prayer was a PR prayer. You don't even remember you prayed. You don't even remember that you had placed the person before the hands of God. The Bible says that it is the persistent prayer of a righteous person that availeth much. What does the church say? And that's why we are saying don't pray if you won't pray. How? All the way. Don't pray if you won't pray all the way. You see, this is what Sister White says in the book Prayer, a collection of quotes of E.G. White on prayer. The book Prayer, page 233, paragraph 4, crossing to page 234, first paragraph, says, Persistence in prayer is necessary when praying for the sick. Not technical small time PR prayers. Let's pray. And then you walk away and forget about the person. In praying for the sick, it is essential to have faith. For it is in accordance with the word of God. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's why I came to tell you friends, don't pray if you won't pray. In what manner? all the way if you want to marry you are single begin with the prayer but there will be no need to pray if you won't pray how all the way you must be ready to pray before you meet the right person pray when you meet the right person pray when you date Pray when your heart is broken. Pray when you pray for another one. Pray when you meet another one. Pray during the wedding planning. Pray when you get married. And keep praying when you are praying for a child. Pray when the child comes or doesn't come. Pray when the partner turns out not to be the package you ordered as you unwrap over the years of marriage. First year you open the wrap and you wonder, is this what I ordered? Keep praying and otherwise don't pray if you won't pray in what manner? All the way. You are going to school. You are facing national exam this year. You are praying. I advise you don't pray. Unless you will pray in what manner? All the way. Because you pray when results come. When you move on to the next level. Keep praying. Pray this level. Pray next level. And keep praying. The message today is. Don't pray. Unless you will pray in what manner? All the way. Don't pray for your child who is sitting exam and then forget about it when they get to the next level until another exam threatens. Then you start praying again. Ooh, there is an exam coming. Let us now pray. Listen, don't pray unless you will pray all the way. If you understand the word of God, say amen. I heard rumors that there are jobs available in Nairobi and people are being interviewed and people have been shortlisted and you are call calling people to pray for you. I don't know. I'm told these jobs are called CAS or something, something in government. You know, my concern has been the government of heaven, so I don't know much about these governments that worry you. So I heard that this government on earth here in Kenya is giving jobs and so somebody, pastors pray for me, elders pray for me, put me in your prayers, I pray that I get this job, I have small advice for you, don't pray, unless you will pray for how long? All the way. If you want us to pray for you, we will pray for you on condition that you will continue working in government through prayer all the way to the time another government will come and you will exit government. Don't pray 
if you won't pray in what manner all the way don't pray for a child if you won't pray for that child throughout their lifetime don't pray if you won't pray all the way why because transforming prayer is persistent prayer why because prayer that is effective is the persistent don't pray if you won't pray all the way listen friends the book prayer by eg white page 71 first paragraph our prayers are to be earnest and persistent. Our prayers are to be earnest and persistent. God does not say, ask once. God does not say, ask once. God does not say, ask once. There was a time when I was foolish enough, I would tell myself, God is very wise. If I tell him once, it's enough. I tell him, God, I want this enough. He knows, he understands. In fact, he knew before I asked, that's enough, I won't ask again. God has made persistence in prayer a condition for receiving. Let me repeat that. God has made persistence in prayer a condition for receiving. I'm repeating for the third time that God has made persistence in prayer a condition for receiving. I'm repeating for the fourth time that God has made persistence in prayer a condition for receiving an answer. What do you say? God does not say ask once. And you shall receive. He bids us ask and wearingly persist in prayer. The persistent asking brings the petitioner into a more earnest attitude and gives him an increased desire to receive the things for which he asks. That is what Ellen White writes, inspired pen, that we must persist for in persistence our attitude changes. Don't pray if you won't pray all the way. Why is persistence important in prayer? It is because persistence brings transformation that God wants us to have. Listen friends, when you want to pray, your preparation for prayer means you must reconcile with the people. You must repent your sins and you must live a life of piety. If I really care about my sick relative and I want my relative to recover and I want to ask God to heal my relative, number one, I must reconcile with everyone I disagreed with or else my prayer will not be answered. And so the prayer itself is causing a transformation in my life. Why? Because I now want to pray for my sick relative. And I realize I will not kneel to pray when I have not reconciled with you. I will not kneel to pray when there is some sin in my life. So what does that mean? I am forced by the need of prayer to come and say, I'm sorry for offending you. Prayer has started the transforming work. That when you want to pray, there are things that can block your prayer from being heard. Number one, when you have issues with the people. So for my prayer to be accepted, I must address my issues with the people. I must go and seek apology. I must reconcile with someone so that God can answer my prayer. So what is happening? Prayer is causing a transformation in my life 
the arrogant me who could not go and ask for forgiveness now goes for forgiveness and say there is that issue that happened I want us to forgive each other why because the trouble in my backyard has sent me to prayer and there will be no prayer going up when there are issues unresolved with the people that's why many people waste prayer. Why? They have issues they have not resolved with anyone. And they are stuck praying. God says, sort the issue with that person before coming here. Transforming power of prayer. Repent. You cannot be having a side cheek somewhere. And you are praying for your child to pass an exam. Oh, my child is doing an exam at Kenya School of Law. A very critical exam. My child is doing a medicine final exam. Oh, my child. But you have kept some character in Thika or Utawala. Or you have a character in Mulolongo. You are paying, diverting rent there. That prayer is not going anywhere. Or you are flirting with some man somewhere, exchanging texts. You know, when you get home, you need a few minutes to sanitize and prepare for home environment. Let me tell you, that prayer ain't going nowhere. And your prayer for your child will hit the wall and come back to you. And so what happens? Prayer forces you to start reviewing your funny relationships. <laughs> the transforming power of prayer. The transforming power of prayer. Because I must pray for my child, now I must do away with the other side dishes that I have. Hi, we may not be able to talk again. Uh, something is coming up. Yeah, you will not find me on this number. Uh, uh, mm, uh, bye, see you. Then you buy a new phone number and you disappear on site transformed by prayer. Transformed by prayer. Transformed by prayer. Transformed by prayer. Are there believers in this house? today transformed by prayer prayer forces you to understand that you are in the presence of God and you cannot hide anything before our God what does the church say Amen. yeah can't be here oh I'm looking for a job I'm looking for a job and you are living with a boyfriend or with a girlfriend. You are not married. Nobody knows about it. You will never find the job. Forget about it. It's not coming anytime soon. And if you find it, it will be a miserable job. And after a while, you will be praying again. And so, you will be forced to make a very difficult decision to move from that boyfriend's house to your ugly aunt who makes your life difficult and stay there by the grace of God. Hallelujah, church. And then you will come next year during international women's days of prayer and say, I'm transformed by prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Transformed by prayer. You cannot be an arrogant boss at work. Everyone hates you and you are a Christian. You mistreat everyone at work. And then you are here praying for your mother who is unwell. Your mother may die because of you. God is not going to answer that prayer. That arrogance must come to an end. You must now tone down. You are a desperate man in need of the Lord. And all of a sudden, the people at work will notice transformation. And see, these days you can even greet people. You who used to walk arrogantly into office. Did you finish that work yesterday? Can you put that file on my desk? And you are walking around looking like you really care about the job. The job doesn't care about you, by the way. Because when you die, they replace you and life goes on. It's not as critical as you want to make it look like. 
Listen, brothers and sisters. And after a while, the people at the workplace will be wondering, why has this man changed? Where has the arrogance gone to? And then somebody will whisper to them, transformed by prayer. Transformed by prayer. Transformed by prayer. The way you've been mistreating your house helps. <laughs> Domestic workers backing orders and treating them like they are children of a lesser God. But now trouble comes your way. And you have come across something at the hospital they call biopsy. Mm -hmm. And now big words. And now you are hearing words like prognosis and now you are trembling and you are in need of the Lord and you start praying and you discover that God will not answer your prayer unless number one you are a righteous person number two you persist so that means you cannot behave well for the one prayer because you must make a lot of prayers your behavior must be a lot of good behaviors hallelujah and because of a lot of good behaviors, you are transformed by prayer. Transformed by prayer. I'm here to tell you God's people. It is true when God says we must persist in prayer. Hey. There's a corner of this church, people are not saying anything. But I say that if you keep quiet, may the Lord bring you enough trouble to say amen next time. Are we together? You know, so that you will understand what it means to receive a blessing and say amen. You know, this is not a theater where you came to see some character walk around saying things. No, it's a house of blessing. When things are said, you are supposed to respond. Not sit there with an attitude, you know, looking like you are waiting after church to give an assessment of the preacher. Who do you think you are? <laughs> you need to be transformed by what? Yeah. By prayer. When you are praying persistently, you are forced to think about God, to depend on God, to look up to God, to wait on God. And that makes you a child of God. When you persist in prayer, it means that your head is turned upward. That's what it means to persist in prayer. That prayer turns your head upwards. All the time you are praying, you have been turned upwards. And because you are doing it so many times, now Colossians 3 is fulfilled where it says that focus your attention on things above. Focus your attention on things above. Focus your attention on things above. And that has happened because you have persisted in what? In prayer. Mm. Well. <laughs> the answer to prayer will build your faith in God by giving you a reason to trust him again. But when you don't get the desired answer, it reminds you that God is sovereign and he doesn't have to do your bidding. You know, you can pray and like Israelites, you say, the God who brought us from Egypt, the God who opened the Red Sea, the God who fed us with manna, the God who gave me a job, the God who gave me success, the God who did this, the God who did that because of the good things God did. But you can also be like Apostle Paul. You plead with the Lord to remove the thorn in your flesh and he says my grace is sufficient. And all of a sudden you learn to live in difficulty. And now you say, I rejoice in persecution. I rejoice in suffering. I rejoice in sickness. I rejoice in difficulty. I rejoice in what I go through. Why? Because the grace of God is sufficient. That's what it means to be transformed by prayer. Praise the Lord. That's why I came to tell you, friends. Don't pray if you won't pray all the way. 
Because it is only in persistence in prayer that you get transformed. Luke chapter 18 verse 1 was our key text. Luke chapter 18 verse 1. Luke chapter 18 verse 1. I don't know if you will find it. Luke chapter 18 verse 1. Let's try. Let's try to find Luke chapter 18 verse 1. We will read the rest of that passage this afternoon when I come back. It's only afternoon in Africa after the session of lunch has passed. I know we are fasting today, but after the hour dedicated for lunch passes, then afternoon begins. Is that okay? So in Africa, unless the lunch hour has passed, even if it is 4 p.m., it's not yet afternoon. You know that very well. And we are proud of our heritage. Are we together? Yeah, we are proud of our heritage. Now, Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Then Jesus told them a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. The version on your screen says, He then told them a parable on the need for them to pray how? Always and not become what? Discouraged. Jesus gave a parable intentionally to teach the importance of persistence in prayer. The widow who prayed persistently in Luke chapter 18 verse 1, had her request granted because she was persistent in prayer. Anna got a child when she prayed for the child after persistence in prayer. I came to tell you, New Life Church, you need to persist in prayer. And there will be no persistence in prayer unless prayer is your lifestyle. There will be no persistence in prayer unless prayer is your lifestyle. There will be no persistence in prayer unless prayer is your lifestyle. Don't pray if you won't pray all the way. Listen, brothers and sisters, your academic success requires persistence in prayer and in studies. Your marriage requires persistence in prayer but in also in patience and forgiveness. Your health requires persistence in right habits and prayer. Your spiritual life requires persistence in church attendance, persistence in Bible study, and persistence in prayer. Listen, your financial life requires persistence in budgeting, persistence in sticking to the budget, austerity measures and also persistence in prayer the bible says in luke chapter 18 verse 1 then jesus told the disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up to show them that they must pray all the way to show them that they must pray persistently. Now I have a question for you. Will you pray without giving up? I have a question for you. Will you do the right thing plus prayer without giving up? I have a question for you. Do you pray for grace not to give up? I am here to ask you. Now, do you now embrace persistence in prayer so that you can be transformed by prayer? I've asked you many questions, friends. But the bottom line is, you need to pray for a prayer life that is persistence. Is that your prayer today? Let me see by the show of hands. Father in heaven, we have been praying erratically. We pray here, pray there, forget to pray, pray again, pray another day. Trouble comes, we pray. Happiness comes, we don't pray. Today we lift up our hands asking you to give us the grace to persist in prayer. In good times and bad times, help us to persist in prayer. That when we choose a prayer life, it will be all the way and not part of the way. Forgive us for the past and give us a prayer life. In Jesus' name we pray.